Now today we're going to talk about the topic of being a, a vegan or a vegetarian but still wanting to focus on your hormonal health. This is probably one of the most often asked questions that we get so uh, we figured finally we're going to put together a good video for you guys and, and hopefully shed some light on, on a proper way to think about things. Now uh, first off, I think it's overly simplistic for uh, either myself or anyone else who's teaching testosterone enhancement or um, hormonal health enhancement. It's overly simplistic to just say that uh, you should only eat meat and you shouldn't be a vegan or shouldn't be a vegetarian. Now a lot of people have reasons for being vegan or vegetarian and uh, who am I to you know, tell you that you shouldn't do it. But I can be realistic in terms of helping you out with some steps. And what we're going to do in this video, we're going to talk about eight steps that you can take to make sure that you understand and steps that you can implement in your daily life that will help you as a vegan or a vegetarian or somebody who wants to focus more on on eating a plant-based diet rather than a meat-heavy diet. If you fall into that camp, these eight things are going to help you and help guide you along the way to make sure that you don't make any crucial mistakes. Because as, as we all know, actually, you could be a meat eater or you could be a vegan or a vegetarian and you could be extremely unhealthy in both camps. So I just want to help you out with some tips to, to make sure that you focus on the right hormonal health principles in your diet and, and make sure that you don't skimp on anything that's very essential. Now before we get into number one, I want to give a hat tip to Mika at AnnexMen.com. Uh, he actually put together a really good guide for uh, vegans that are looking to increase their testosterone naturally. And I'll put a link to that guide here in the, in the description of this YouTube video. But number one is to make sure that you are consuming enough calories. And this might seem like a no-brainer, but a lot of times uh, when people switch to a plant-based diet, especially when they're, they're in the transition phase, it can be difficult when, you, when you're trying to figure out what foods you want to eat in that without you know, consuming meat, which is a very calorically dense food source, to try and get enough calories in your diet. And that's why you know, a, lot of, a lot of people who are very, very strict vegans tend to be lower body weight than uh, people that are not. First off, make sure you get enough calories because overall, if you're in a big deficit, it doesn't matter where the food's coming from. If you're in a big deficit, uh, you're going to have problems with your hormones because your body's going to basically go into a state of chronic stress. You're going to have higher cortisol and you're going to also slow down your metabolic rate. So uh, you want to make sure that you get enough calories in general just to support the body weight, to support your, your uh, training efforts or whatever you're doing to uh, keep yourself active and, and healthy, whether it's weightlifting, swimming, whatever you're doing, surfing. Uh, just make sure you have enough uh, energy intake to balance the, the overall energy balance in your, in your diet. All right, so number two, I want, you, I, want, I want to talk about fats and fiber. Now, a lot of people think that, that just uh, eating a plant-based diet in and of itself is going to be healthy. There are actually a lot of, there's research showing that specifically uh, things like a very high fiber diet is going to be bad for testosterone production. So you want to make sure that if you are, or if you're a vegan and you're consuming a lot of plant-based foods, uh, that you don't necessarily want to focus on super high fiber foods. It's going to disrupt your hormone balance. Uh, you can get plenty of, like, just the right amount of fiber. Uh, I'm not saying to overconsume or underconsume. I'm saying to shoot for the right amount. Uh, but basically, don't overextend yourself and go into the, the very high fiber territory because the mainstream says that you should eat high fiber. Keep the fiber in check, and you're also not going to have any real stomach issues. Uh, but also, in terms of fat intake, this is probably one of the biggest mistakes that I see vegetarians and vegans make uh, in terms of their, their hormonal health is that they consume typically very high polyunsaturated fat diet. And in general, it doesn't matter if you eat meat or not, if you're consuming a lot of polyunsaturated fats, uh, you're going to have problems with your hormone production, specifically with androgen production. So keep the, the PUFAs on the low side and focus more on saturated fat, which is something you can get from, from plant sources, especially something like coconut oil. Is a very good source of that, which is very easy to get, and you can you know cook with it and whatever. But then also monounsaturated fats like olive oil and uh, or olives and avocados. So if you if you focus on and these are just the same principles really as as anyone who would eat meat. In terms of your fat intake, focus on saturated fat and monounsaturated fat, and keep your polyunsaturated fat to a minimum. So fiber tends to elevate what's known as sex hormone binding globulin, with SHBG. Therefore, it reduces the bioavailability of testosterone. That's basically the, the uh, testosterone that's available for use in your body and overall free androgen index. And that's basically why, according to the, these research studies, why vegetarians and vegans have higher SHBG and lower free androgen index. Okay, so to wrap up this point, basically what you should do 
is uh, shoot for about, especially as a vegetarian or vegan, shoot for about 40% of your, your daily caloric intake to be from fat sources. So the, the, fat, the main fat source that I would recommend would be coconut oil uh, in terms of the saturated fat, but then also you can get your fat from avocados and olive oil as well. Now some sources of fat that I would avoid, basically fat sources that are polyunsaturated fats, are the following. Flaxseed oil, soybean oil, walnut oil, grapeseed oil, and most nuts except for macadamia and Brazil nuts. All right, now number three on the list is uh, to, to focus on protein intake. And uh, protein actually can be one of the bigger challenges. I've, I've seen both sides of the picture, basically where some vegans and vegetarians complain a lot about inability to get protein in their diet, but then others say that it's, it's perfectly easy to get plenty of protein. So make sure that you have plenty of protein in your diet. However, don't overconsume protein. Again, this is the same type of principle that I would teach anybody. You don't need as much protein as you might think you need to support your training. You need to, you need to consume probably around 20% of your daily caloric intake, get it from protein. And at that point, uh, you're going to be able to support your training optimally. Uh, you could still gain muscle, and you're going to have enough to support your body's uh, metabolic processes. So in terms of testosterone, protein is correlated with free testosterone levels and lower SHBG levels, and we'll put some studies here up on the screen right now. So it's not something that you should neglect, but it is something that you should not overconsume because having the right amount of fat and carbohydrate intake is extremely important for your hormonal health as well. And what we see a lot of guys, doesn't matter if you're vegan, vegetarian, or a, a meat eater, a lot of guys who have low T problems related to imbalance of macronutrient intake, it's typically because they're over consuming protein and they're, they're under consuming fats and carbs, which are more important for uh, your endocrine health. So don't over consume the protein, but make sure you focus on getting enough protein in your diet as a vegan or vegetarian where you can support your training and feel good, feel full, and you'll be fine. All right, number four on the list is to consume enough carbs, and this shouldn't be a difficult thing as a vegan or a vegetarian, but definitely just keep your eye on it. You can still get these from starchy sources like white rice, but consume enough carbs, especially if you are weight training, especially if you're training. Uh, if you have sleeping issues, it will behoove you to consume more carbs, especially because I know some people are trying to do a vegan or vegetarian diet, but still do like a ketosis diet and that sort of thing, uh, which seems very complicated. <laughs> but basically just make sure you get enough carbs in your diet. Shoot for about 40% uh, of your daily caloric intake to come from carbohydrates. And if this uh, seems like too much or too little, then you can adjust it from there. And uh, as long as you are keeping your, and I did another video on this recently about what's the, the optimal macronutrient ratio for testosterone production or for homo hormonal health. Uh, if you keep your protein at about 20% of your daily uh, caloric intake, and then you can adjust your fats and carbs based on your own uh, preferences. People have different insulin sensitivity and different levels of insulin resistance, basically. Uh, they have different micronutrient deficiencies, all things that are gonna influence the way that they react to carbohydrates, and, and you can go through phases, basically. You can increase insulin sensitivity over time and then be able to handle carbohydrates better over time. So definitely just, just know thyself and, and basically start with somewhere like a 20-40-40 ratio between the protein, carbs, and fats. Uh, but you can measure them and, and make them go up and down depending on how you feel. And a lot of it will come down to individual basis because we are individuals. Everybody is, is a biochemically different, basically. Uh, at a certain level just because of the additive effect of however many decades you've been alive where you've been consuming different foods, different chemicals, different levels of stress than anyone else around you. So 20-40-40 is a great starting point and then you can just adjust from there. I would also recommend that uh, when you're consuming carbs to definitely get a, a lot of your carbohydrates from fruits. Now fruits obviously are very high in fructose and fructose has been shown to negatively correlate uh, with SHBG levels. So the more fructose you consume, you're actually going to have lower SHBG levels, which is great because that leaves more free testosterone bioavailable in your bloodstream to bind to androgen receptors, which is awesome. So definitely eat more fruit. And they're very uh, micronutrient dense, fruits are, especially if you get stuff that's not like just <coughs> fruit. Just make sure you, you get good fruit. Uh, you can get it at the you know, local farmer's market or get some kind of organic fruit. Uh, just the highest quality fruit you can get that doesn't have a lot of pesticides sprayed all over it. Or you, if you know it does, you can peel the skin and it'll be fine. But it's becoming increasingly difficult to get great fruit. But if you're going to uh, consume a lot of fruit on a daily basis, I would definitely make it a priority to find a good fruit source. It might be a local farm or, or whatever, but definitely you know, eat more fruit. 
All right, number five on the list is to just address any micronutrient deficiencies that you have. And this is, again, the same type of advice that we would give for anyone, that, whether you're a vegan, vegetarian, or a meat eater. Make sure that you're not deficient in micronutrients because if you're deficient in certain things, you're going to have a lot of problems producing testosterone in the first place. So one of the most helpful things you can do is measure your vitamin and mineral levels, whether it's through a blood or a hair test or whatever it is, measure them and then you know what you're working with. You actually have some data. So say you're de deficient in selenium and potassium, right? So now you know, but all your other levels are fine. Now you know, oh, I should probably consume, you know, a couple Brazil nuts on a daily basis because they're extremely high in selenium. And uh, for potassium, maybe I need to consume more, uh, you know, coconut water and bananas until I start feeling better. Or maybe I should just supplement with a high-quality bioavailable supplement form of each of those. And then you're going to see that, that with, you know, within a short period of time, you're going to be feeling a lot better than you are at that point if you're deficient in something. So this part of the list is just to make sure in general that you don't become deficient or you, you don't ignore any underlying deficiencies that you might have because it can be very easy for anyone to uh, fall into certain eating habits and eating patterns where you're eating the similar things every single day, but you might be neglecting uh, certain micronutrients that you should either start to branch out in your diet or you should just supplement with those vitamins and minerals to make sure that you're not deficient because your body pulls on those as resources to fuel so many metabolic processes and uh, hormonal processes. So you just want to make sure that you're not deficient in anything. All right, so next up on the list is to avoid things that are anti-androgenic. This is definitely pretty crucial, and it can be kind of difficult if you're uh, on a, a vegan or vegetarian diet, but it's definitely not impossible, especially if you're just aware of the following list of anti-androgens. So I would avoid these because they've been proven to lower androgen levels. So if you're looking to optimize your hormonal health, increase your testosterone as a vegan or vegetarian, you should probably limit your intake of the following. Soy, flaxseed, licorice, mints, specifically peppermint and spearmint, hops, astaxanthin, and reishi mushroom. Now some things to consider. There, there was a study that reported a case of a 19-year-old man who lost his sex drive and had erectile dysfunction due to a soy-based vegan diet. His total and free testosterone were very low. And after stopping the diet in one year, his testosterone levels went back to normal. Now here's another study that showed that men that consumed the most soy had the lowest sperm concentrations. And in this study, it showed that men who consume soy protein isolate experienced a small decrease in the testosterone and uh, increase in estradiol as well as a very significant decrease in DHT and a decrease in the DHT to testosterone ratio. Now here's a study right here that showed that flaxseed supplementation results in decreased testosterone levels in men. And uh, in this study, the supplementation of uh, licorice to normal healthy men resulted in a massive drop in testosterone levels. It basically cut their testosterone levels in half in seven days. So you don't really want to consume licorice unless you are addicted to it. I don't think it's a good thing to, to eat. Even if you are addicted to it, you should definitely stop eating it. Now hops are also another strong source of phytoestrogens and basically they, they'll even cause menstrual issues in women. Uh, so they're, they're going to decrease your testosterone levels. Now in this study, they found out that a supplementation with astaxanthin decreased DHT levels significantly in healthy men regardless of the dose. Now, uh, they also saw very similar uh, results in this study right here. Now, both studies showed an increase in testosterone, but this is due to a, a lower conversion to DHT, which is it's kind of like a false flag. It, it basically, you see the same thing with something like fenugreek, where it'll, it'll uh, inhibit DHT conversion, so you have higher testosterone levels, but really you're not reaping any of the benefits of those higher testosterone levels because DHT is a stronger androgen and you're inhibiting its natural conversion. Reishi uh, mushrooms have also been found to inhibit 5-alpha reductase, which is basically the enzyme that converts testosterone to DHT. All right, so number seven on the list is to uh, use supplements that work. There are tons of supplements out there. Uh, you go to any major retailer, there are going to be an overwhelming amount of supplements that you could you could try or, or whatever. Basically, there are supplements that don't work and there are supplements that do work. And uh, the, the basis for something that, that is going to help you is first you need to identify your goal. And uh, most people don't and they just, they just will take you know, whatever their favorite bodybuilder is taking, even though it might not help them, even though it might just be a sugar powder or cellulose powder or whatever it is. But if, if your intention is to raise testosterone, there are certain things that are very, very helpful for that. But first off, and I don't even know if this is, this doesn't even necessarily need to be lumped into the supplement category, but basically, like I said earlier, make sure you're not deficient in micronutrients 
make sure you're not deficient in any vitamins and minerals because if you supplement and bring those levels back up to normal, you won't have to continue supplementing with them uh, unless you want to have like a daily practice of, of making sure that you don't become deficient again. But you're going to see a massive improvement in your health by doing that because you'll no longer be deficient. You'll have corrected the deficiency. So that is great. There are also some, some really good herbs like ashwagandha and forskolin that are, that are amazing for testosterone production, for lowering cortisol levels, specifically uh, in terms of herbs, adaptogenic herbs. Uh, ginseng is another good one. These kind of herbs fight stress. And as we all know, cortisol and testosterone work antithetically, essentially. So the higher your cortisol is, the lower your testosterone is going to be. So especially if you live a stressful lifestyle, uh, maybe you're commuting, you have uh, family problems or work problems or whatever it is, maybe you have, you have sleep issues. If you have a chronically high cortisol level, adaptogenic herbs are going to be extremely helpful to help you lower your cortisol because that is, that is what they do. They fight stress in your body. Uh, and then they do work. They're, they're amazing. So there are a lot of supplements out there that you could be consuming basically as an insurance policy to make sure that your testosterone levels are, are good and your hormonal health is, is very good. And, and uh, for more information on that, we have tons of videos on, on this channel. But you can use supplements, especially if you're doing a plant-based diet. There are going to be certain things that you might not be getting on a regular basis or there's going to be certain uh, objectives that you want to achieve, like lowering your cortisol levels, where something like a good herb is going to do the trick. So that's that. All right, and last but not least, you just want to make sure that you're training correctly. So uh, I highly recommend weight training. I highly recommend using the testosterone work principle. So essentially doing a lot of work on as much muscle volume as possible and as explosive of a manner as possible to elicit a large hormonal response from your training. So you can maintain a lot of muscle mass, you can gain muscle mass, and so you can keep your cortisol in check because that is the other element of the equation that most people don't understand is that especially when you're doing something like uh, chronic endurance training. I used to be a triathlete and I used to run races and swim and bike all the time and I would go out and I'd be training you know, 20 hours a week plus and part of the issue there was that I was chronically elevating my cortisol and so my, my testosterone was just being suppressed the whole time. So there are certain types of training that are going to work with you and certain types of things that are going to work against you. So I recommend, uh, I, I wrote this book uh, Ali Kwopla and I made this, and it's called the Thor Program. Uh, it's also available in digital format if you're international or if you don't like books. Basically, the Thor Program is designed specifically for testosterone training, basically hormonal enhancement training. It tells you exactly what to do. Also inside it, you'll see uh, we have a full training diary in the back, and there are example three and five day splits because I know people like to, to, some people like to train more than three days a week, but other people are very busy and they only want to train three days a week. So. Uh, we put that all into the Thor program, so you can check that out. So there you have it. Those are the principles that you should focus on as a vegan or a vegetarian. As long as you focus on these principles uh, for hormonal health, I think you're going to be just fine. Now, a lot of people, you know, they get scared one way or the other. Uh, I'm not, you know, against vegan or vegetarian diets. Uh, I think you can be healthy and unhealthy on, on any kind of diet. So uh, just if you op operate by hormonal health principles, you can have a, a great diet and you'll feel good. So if you're a vegan or vegetarian, if you're one of the guys who's been asking for us to do this video, I, I would recommend just evaluating, you know, looking over this list and basically evaluating your own diet, uh, your own daily uh, habits and, and patterns, and seeing what you could change and what you can adjust to, to better optimize it for this. So hopefully this helped. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll see you on the next video.